Between building my Unraid server, recently upgrading its storage, and recently doing some drive replacements on my NAS units, I started thinking about which technology is actually better. If you're interested in learning more about what the differences are, then stay tuned for the rest of this video. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and click that notification bell so you'll be notified of future content. Recently I spent a lot of time upgrading storage on a couple of NAS units, um, as well as my Unraid server. Doing these upgrades made me think not only about the initial setup, but about normal use such as expandability, performance, ease of use. Since I've been using hardware, uh, hardware RAID for so many years, using Unraid kind of gave me a different perspective. So I decided to make this video capture my thoughts and maybe help anybody who's trying to decide which one to use. It's certainly not a new topic, but I think that since both products are constantly evolving, that they're even more relevant today. So I thought it was worth sharing my thoughts and perspectives. The areas I want to focus on and cover today are the initial cost, the hardware and drive flexibility, the repairability and support, storage and expansion and the different methodologies that each one uses. And then I want to get into the setup, configuration, app, third-party app, and last but not least, performance. So assuming you don't have any existing hardware, um, I put together a list of an average PC build. Nothing special, kind of, you know, kind of run-of-the-mill using a micro ATX board. And compare this against the pre-built NAS so we can just have a point of comparison. Now obviously the cost of the computer that you build can uh, vary wildly based on what you do and what you buy and what you want it to do. But I'm assuming for this comparison just a basic standard four port motherboard um, for a basic NAS unit. Also if you already got some existing hardware obviously that will swing the cost into one direction. Um, I also made a couple of assumptions in this comparison. I used an Intel-based NAS unit and an Intel-based CPU for my Unraid build. Since most NAS units don't come with GPUs, I also assumed uh, the use of the integrated GPU for hardware decoding. Um, I also used three 8 terabyte drives as my reference configuration, and obviously what you put in will vary. But again, this is just to compare the two. As you can see from the chart, building an Unraid server is a little bit cheaper than a pre-built 4-bay NAS, and obviously a lot cheaper if you already have some hardware. And the difference grows significantly when you go up in, in bay size. So if you get a 6 to 8 drive, if you're looking for a 6 to 8 drive unit, the price will increase. For a 12, let's say for example, for an 8 to 12 bay Unraid setup, the price will only go up for about two to three hundred dollars just for the hardware not for the drives of course whereas the NAS unit will almost double for an 8 bay and even greater difference for a 12 bay so in terms of you know initial cost the advantage certainly goes to building your own hardware and using Unraid just as long as you're comfortable with a greater level of complication and um, doing the configuration from ground up on the software now, keep in mind that the Unraid server can also have slightly higher power draw depending on the hardware you used. And typically you're using a larger footprint because you're dealing with a standard PC case of some sort. So let's talk a little bit about flexibility and scalability in terms of hardware. Flexibility um, and scalability is one of the areas that's clearly dominated by Unraid. Because not only can you pick your own hardware, but you can make it as powerful as you want. Um, and obviously you can even reuse what you currently have. But most importantly, you can mix and match drives to, stu to suit your storage needs. Um, NAS units are not nearly as configurable. Other than RAM and possibly uh, PCI Express slot, they tend to be more of a turnkey solution with little to no upgrade path. In addition to NAS units, um, typically are using RAID 5 which requires all drives to be the same size. So if you want to upgrade your storage as I just did, you either have to add a drive or you have to replace all the current drives in the array. On the pro side, you do get a complete warranty and support package with a NAS that you don't really get with a do, 
do-it-yourself type server. Um, since I've had to use support a couple times through QNAP, um, it's kind of nice to have that fallback position. In terms of uh, repairability, assuming you're comfortable with replacing parts, computer parts such as RAM, motherboards, power supplies, CPUs, this is an area where Unraid has a huge advantage. As there's no real proprietary hardware, you can easily go out and buy hardware from virtually anywhere of any type and put it in your Unraid server. With the exception of a couple incompatible items, you're kind of free to use whatever hardware you want. Um, and you can upgrade the NAS at any time, or the Unraid at any time. The NAS, on the other hand, is the kind of a turnkey solution, so parts and repair are typically more difficult and require you contact the manufacturer, which means potentially you might have a little bit more downtime if it's an actual hardware failure. On the upside, the NAS does offer manufacturing support or manufacturer support um, as it's one unit. So whether you have hardware or software issues, they'll get resolved by the NAS supplier, such as QNAP or Synology. Since I've only had QNAP products um, for quite a while, I've always found their support to be excellent. You know, when it comes to storage, um, there's a little bit of a different scenario here. This is an area where Unraid and NAS units with using RAID 5 are the same, but completely different at the same time. So they both offer a level of redundancy, so you can easily recover from one drive failure. However, they handle data quite differently. Unray typically writes across multiple disks, but at any one file is only written to one drive. And the parity is only written to the parity drive. RAID 5, on the other hand, writes data and parity information across all drives, so it distributes the stress of writing parity um, giving it the edge on performance. The other big difference in each approach is what happens to your data if you lose more than one drive, um, which is highly unlikely, but if you should, Unraid will still retain the data on the drives that are still good. Um, you will lose the data on the bad drives, but you'll retain whatever is being stored on the good drives. Um, in contrast, the NAS unit on using RAID 5 will lose the entire array if, if two drives are lost at the same time. To get two drives of security or two drives of extra security, um, you'll need to run a configuration, a RAID 6 configuration, that would give you a total of two drives that can go bad at any given time and not lose any data. But keep in mind the likelihood of losing two drives in the exact same time is extremely low. And none of these solutions are backups, so you should still be backing up your critical data. Next, I want to talk about initial setup and configuration, which will probably be somewhat controversial depending on if you've used these products before. Um, in this particular category, I would give the advantage to the NAS units. Um, they're a lot easier to set up, configure, and they have a huge selection of third-party apps that are typically a lot easier to set up than what you find in Unraid. In terms of selection, they're probably comparable. Like there's a lot of stuff available for Unraid, but there's also a lot of stuff available for the NAS units that come pre-bundled in their store. So it makes it a lot easier to install. And you don't usually need a lot of extra special configuration. For a small business, I would just deploy NAS. But if you're a tech enthusiast and you like to experiment and don't mind the learning curve, Unraid is a great option. So let's get into performance. Um, this is another area which will probably be somewhat controversial. But in my experience, performance clearly goes to the NAS units with using RAID 5. If you exclude any kind of caching scheme which can be deployed on either technology, um, straight hardware and straight hard drive configuration, the NAS units with RAID 5 can be three or four times faster than Unraid. Unraid writes files to a single drive and parity to the parity drive. So typical performance is probably 60 to 110 megabytes per second, while a NAS unit with RAID 5 can be north of 300 megs per second. Um, add back the caching and it evens up the performance, but only for a small amount of data, whatever will fit on the cache. Caching in Unraid is not nearly as effective or frequent for frequent use um, as the cache setup in, in the NAS units are a lot better in my experience. So what I've set up here is we're going to do a little comparison testing between 
I'm copying some files from my local system, which is on an NVMe drive. And we're going to copy to both the uh, Unraid server and to my NAS units. No caching, both running off 10 gigabit. And we'll just get a baseline comparison. Again, this isn't scientific. It's to give you an idea of the difference in just the, the way it handles data. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this now over to the RAID server and let's compare the difference in both the uh, throughput and the time. So, as you can see, the UnRAID server actually starts out pretty quickly because it's uh, uh, running some of that into memory. And then it sort of starts to uh, tank a little bit. Okay, so it's done and we ended up at 11 minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, so now I'm going to copy the data to the NAS unit and we'll compare the performance and see what happens. So it's just about to finish here. Okay, so it finished in about 3 minutes and 13 seconds versus the 11 minutes and 30 seconds in Unraid. So as you can see, it's just a huge difference in performance. And these again are all red drives. Um, this is a, roughly a right around a $550 NAS unit. It's something that's still available. It's nothing real special um, in terms of performance. If you look at pure raw CPU performance, obviously the uh, Unraid server is um, running a Core i5, so it's got significantly more horsepower. It's got 32 gigs of RAM, none of which are present on the NAS. But what you're seeing here in terms of raw file performance is that it's just wildly faster. That completes the write performance. So let's get into um, the read performance and see if we see any big variations there. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to actually, I've created some different folders on my SSD and now I'm going to copy the data, the same data that we put onto the NAS units. I'm going to copy it back to a different folder just to get an idea of what the performance is. So we're going to start here with the NAS unit. So let's go ahead and copy that. And then let's get the stopwatch going here. Paste. So we're going to compare the read performance to see if there's any significant difference. Okay, so we're now getting down towards the last few seconds of the test here. As you can see, it's 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 copying data pretty fast. Um, let's see what this ends up with, and we'll do some comparison. 
Okay, so we read that data onto the SSD at about three minutes and four seconds. So now what I want to do is I'm going to take the data from the Unraid server that we copied in and copy it to a fresh folder in, on my SSD. And then we'll compare that, that reading. So let's copy. Okay, we are getting close to the end of the test now, and we get to see uh, how this turns out. As you can see, it's again really stable. It's just constant, which makes it ideal for media serving. Okay, getting close. Okay, and there it is, 7 minutes and 19 seconds, so um, more than twice as slow. But again, it's, you know, it does a lot better in the read performance than it does in the write performance. I think you know by now this is not a straightforward choice. It really starts with your comfort level of doing things yourself, putting your own hardware together, and your willingness to go through a learning curve, especially for the setup and the app configuration. Secondly, it really depends on your use case. If you have a need to get something up and running quickly and need performance, such as for a small office or to centralize your storage for video editing, photos, and other uses, then a NAS is probably a better choice. In my opinion, Unraid is really well suited for general storage and mostly for media storage. In my own experience, if you're replacing local storage and want a plug-and-play solution that can easily attach to the outside services, such as cloud services, then the NAS is your best solution. They're very easy to configure, really pretty fast, and are bundled with a wide variety of apps that require almost little to no configuring. For me, I've moved all my media storage, photo archives, and some archives to Unraid, and I've been really happy with it especially after setting up a cache drive, which helps me write, you know, small amounts of data uh, much faster. But as my key or center of my centralized storage at home, I'm going to stick with my key nap until Unraid kind of increases its performance level. Overall, there's really no wrong choice, and it really depends on what you're comfortable with and what you'll be happy with. But either direction you go, I hope this will help clarify something and make your choice a little bit easier. I hope you've really enjoyed this video and let me know your thoughts and experiences in the comments. If you haven't already done so, please don't forget to subscribe and click that notification icon so you'll be notified of any new content. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.